Hi, welcome back to the second video of this series, how to start a starting program with the Smart Vision 2 chip and the board SMF2000. If you have not watched the first video of this series, please refer to it because in that video I mentioned about what are the hardware, what are the equipment that you need to have in order to run this lab tutorial and how to set up the software environment necessary in your local computer in order to proceed with the lab. However, in that video I forgot to mention we need to download the Beauty. Beauty is the terminal emulator software. I will put this link in the video description. Please check it out and you need to download the version which is compatible for your computer. Uh, in my computer I will need to download the 64-bit x86. In order to check out this information you can go to control panel and then you check the system and security and you go to system. This is where you can find all the information, almost all the information about your chip of your computer and the system is the 64-bit operating system x64 and uh, because this is Intel so I guess it should be the x86 I downloaded extract and I install the software and it works on my computer so please check it out and install it before you proceed further and uh, and the next thing I would like to show is where we can download all of the official documents and resources related to this lab. Uh, you can see this is the web page maintained by Trains, which is the official company who designed this board, the SMF2000 board, going with this Smart Vision 2 chip. They call this board as the TAM001. Maybe we can check it out. Yes, if you see the back side of the, the board, you can see this is the TAM001 and the author name of the board is the SMF2000 and I will put this link in the video description, please check it out and the materials that we can find is in the lab guides go to the lab guides and you just need to download in this lab, we just need to download this instruction and this resources. After you download two of them into your computer, I will show you. So this is where I download them. This one is for the instruction and this one is for the resources. If you open the resources file, the f you can see that there are some subfolders and inside the constraint, which is the IO constraints file, very necessary. And then the hex file, the hexamol file, which is containing the program that we need to import into the memory to run the system and the GCL script in order to create the project automatically. You can just extract them or you can extract them and then you just need to copy those files. Those are the important files into somewhere. For example, I copy those important files into some folders that I created because I want to focus on the primary conditions to run the lab but but not like try I mean I try to peel or to rip out the many abstraction layers to see the bare minimum that we need and after that you can open this um, you can open this PDF file I already opened it here this is the full instruction. You can just follow it step by step with the resources that you already downloaded. And uh, this is the instruction that they will introduce. What is the aim of this instruction lab? So the aim is to use the Smart Vision 2 Microsoft system in order to read in the input from from the user button, which is over here. And then we will use a uh, call post with modulation which is the PWM the, the PWM in the fabric 
the fabric usually to refer to the FPGA part of the smart fusion two tip and they will use that redesigned core into the FPGA in order to control the blinking of the LED array over here and that is the instruction and in our case in this video I will first go through the step 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5 in order to show what is the aim that they would like to introduce through those steps but first we should look through whether we have everything we need in order to run this lab if you go down a little bit for the tutorial requirements in the lab instruction you can find there are two requirements software and hardware requirements and for the software we need to install the micro semi liberal system on chip on our is the microchip liberal system on chip we already made it in the very first video if you have not watched it please watch it i show you how to download how to activate the license that we need in order to use the liberal system on chip and the license is for free so everybody can use it and next we need to install the microchip soft control soft console of course we already installed it already and I just introduce you okay we missing we we were missing the beauty in the previous video but you can start to pause this video and download booty install it in your computer and then you can start this video again and move on to the next step and for the hardware we just need to have the transport as an 2000 which is I already said earlier and a cable we just need sorry we just need to have this board and a cable connection which has two connections one is the USB connection to connect to your PC and the other one is the USB C the USB C connection in order to connect to your board and uh, after you have prepared everything then we can go to step by step I would like to have the summary of what the step 1 to 6 or from step 1 to step 5 what would they like to what what would like what would they like to convey through those steps is to to make us to make us get used to the liberal software environment where we can design our chip so with the liberal with the liberal with the liberal we can easily design config the the chip part over here and we can export that that file that design file into the chip we will export our design and configuration file into this chip and then we can start our program sorry I need to navigate yeah so from step 1 to step 5 they want us to get familiar with the liberal software in order to know how to start a project to design and config this smart vision 2 chip over here and now let's start our liberal wait a minute and the liberal will start appearing on your computer screen I don't like to get any update. Uh, if you follow the lab instruction, they will say you need to go to a project, you go to execute script, and you import this project, project creation TLs, TCL provided in the resources file. However, as I would like to, if you look through this information, you can easily somehow linked to what I'm doing however to make um, the step more easier to understand what's happening in the TCL if if we are new to the TCL script we don't know what's happening inside the TCL script and we don't have the feeling want to run it we can just normally create a normal project you choose the location that you want to have your project and you name the project name for me I would just say trial one and cortex m3 because mostly this this task 
is to show us how to config the Cortex M3. And then for the hardware design language, we will use the VHDL. This is the hardware design language we would like to choose in order to design the FPGA part inside our chip. Uh, in our chip. So if you can see, this is the chip, and the chip contains two important sections. One is the micro subsection, which has the Cortex M3 as its focus, and the other section is the FPGA part where you can design your own hardware. And how can we design that own hardware? We will use the VHDL. However, this lab doesn't focus on how to use the VHDL to to design the FPGA, but mostly show us how to config the Cortex M3. And uh, I just double click on the window in order to show the rest of the window. Maybe there are some uh, display errors happening between my software and the computer, but at the moment it's not the problem. So if, I, for example, I double click and the other one disappears and I cannot click on them, I just double click on the window again and things appears again. And we need to go to next. And the family, the family of our chip, if you can see over here, this is the chip, and the family is the Smart Vision 2. And uh, for the die, actually, if you can have the chip already, the next information you can read from this one is the die information. Because the camera qu quality is not too good, so I cannot show the information of the chip on the camera. But I'm sure that if you read the information, it will be M2S010. And also for the package information, you can read on the package of the chip over here. They will say which is the VFG400, and this is the 400 VF for us. And the speed will be STD, and the core voltage will be 1.2, and the range will be commercial. How could I know? I should set up those information. Actually, those information are specified in the protest creation. If we open it with some node, uh, some text reading software, I use the Notepad++. If you open it, you can see, okay, first we need to choose the location for our project. Next is the name of our project. Um, I specify them a little bit different. And then if you go a little bit further down, you can see that they will specify the hardware design language, which is the VHDL. We just chose it in the previous step in Libero already. And now you can see this is the family, this is the die, the package, the speed, and inside this project creation TCL script, they specify already the necessary information. So if we don't know what are the information we should put in the liberal, you can look at the project creation TCL. And the family is the smart version 2, uh, the die is M2S010, and the package is 400 BFG, speed is standard. Die voltage is 1.2 and path range is commercial. When we design our chip for the commercial use, not for this is industrial, but we, we just need to use the commercial. And after we specify, this is the chip that we need to choose from. And we click next. And uh, for the default IO technology, we don't know what to do, right? Either we read the Either we read the uh, product brief or the document going together with the chip, or we can go here again. It's like a cheating way of knowing the information. They say the IO default standard or the technology should be VLC, VL, CMOS, 3 for 3 volt. So we put uh, v LV, sorry, LV CMOS, 3 for 3 volt. Supply voltage, supply voltage is over here, 3.3. And for the uh, for the other one, we can also sort from here. Yep, it's over here. The voltage rim rate, 100 millisecond, 100 millisecond, yes. And if you want to know more about all the options, you can check out the reference that I put in this video description. They explain in details all of the options, you, whether you should check it or whether you should uncheck them. But in this video, I will focus on to follow this instruction lab in order to have our program start running. To get a guess used to what Libero is for, is for designing 
at configuring, configuring the the chip over here. And then we click next. We will choose the system builder. Again, if you want to know about the detailed explanation of those options, please refer to the video reference that I put in this video description. And after we choose the system builder, we can see okay, this is the only call we need to use, and this is 1.1.500. If we look into the lab instruction over here, they also mention that we need to use the Smart Vision 2 Microsoft System version, which is 1.1500. And okay, this is what we have, and we should check this one instantiate system builder Microsoft System Computer component in the Smart Design on creation. When we create this one, we will call the uh, software automatically create a smart design for our Microsoft system component. And we click next. And for the hardware sources, we, we don't use any hardware sources in this case yet, so we import nothing. For the constraints, we can add the constraints later. For the timing and the physical constraints, we can add later during our step in configuring the Smart Vision 2 chip. At this point, we can just finish. And after we finish, you need to wait patiently for a little while. And when the system builder pops up this window, you will enter the name for your system, which is the system that you would like to design for your, your chip or to configure for your chip. I will put in the design trial one. Cortex M3. Click OK. W you can put whatever names you like. It doesn't matter that you need to follow exactly what I named. It doesn't matter. It's just a name. OK. Um, so there, there are some part of the window is hidden. So I just need to double click on the window in order to fix this error. And then we will need to use the Microsoft System on chip flash memory. Actually, in our case, for this board, for this sorry, for this uh, SMF two thousand board, we don't have any external memory. We only use the uh, uh, we have uh, the DRAM and the flash. However, uh, in our case, we would like to use um, the embedded memory inside our chip. So our chip flash memory is the embedded non-volatile memory which is already inside the chip and we want to config, we want to use it, so we check it. Check this option. And inside the microcontroller there's also an option for the real-time counter. We also check it. If you look in this uh, if you look into this one, this is the abstraction information of our chip. So you can see that in our chip there are two parts, which is the micro sub subsystem part over here and the fabric. The fabric to indicate the FPGA part of the the chip and the micro subsystem indicates the microcontroller part of our chip. And inside the micro subsystem system we we can see that the Cortex M3 is the main microcontroller over here. So that's why I name many things in the previous steps, the Cortex M3, because mostly what we are doing here, like the device feature, the memories, the peripherals, they are all mostly for configuring what will happen in this area, what will happen in those blocks. And we click next. And what I'm doing now is just the demonstration of the lab over here. So you can either watch the video or you can read through this lab in order to get maybe more information of what I'm doing. And then in the memory, we need to config the data storage. We will add this data storage to our system. And we will say PGM, maybe just my guess, the program store. Because this part, we will need to import a hexamor file. This is the hexamor file. And this hexamor file, if you open this hexamor file, if you open this hexamor file in a text reader software, you will see they full of numbers. So it's like a program written in the 
computer language so we cannot understand what this program will do however we know that we can use it as a redesign program and we just need to import it into the memory of our chip so we can just import the whole thing the program already inside the memory and the configuration of our chip everything into our chip and run the program itself and uh, now everything here already is the same as in the lab instruction so I can just click OK and you see now uh, we have this part already be inside inside the embedded non-volatile memory of our chip but if you pay attention at this phase I have not connected the board into my computer it means when we design or we config the chip in liberal we not it's not necessary for us to connect our chip into the computer because liberal already aware of what kind of chip it should give us the options to config in the previous step when we created the project you remember that we have to we have to uh, define what is the family what is the die what is the package what is everything else related to our chip so liberal already aware okay this is what I should give out as an option for us in order to config in order to choose and design after you import the program into the memory of the chip we can click next and the peripherals part in our chip besides the Cortex M3 what could we do so for the MSS means the micro subsystem part if you go back if you go back to these this device features you can see this is the MSS part and it create it has lots of blocks and among those blocks they belong to the peripherals category of the MSS and uh, as the instruction as the lab instruction over here tells us to do we need to disable those things only let enable the UART 0 and enable the GPIO because we need to have the GPIO to read in the signal from the user button on the board and we can click on this one this symbol in order to open the configuration of this peripherals and if you check those options they are the same as shown in the lab instruction so we can click OK and for the GPIO we also need to configure it and uh, to config the GPIO every part of the uh, the rest of the GPIO are not used but we just need to use only one pin of this GPIO which is the GPIO 8 and we use it as input because we want to read in the uh, user button and uh, we can config this GPIO of this micro subsystem to be connected to this IO pad however this IO pad is not like on the board over here on the board over here the user button already physically connected to a determined package pin of our chip already and that pin is not 819 so that's why we cannot use this pad or use this physical pin in order to read in the signal from the GPIO we need to use the fabric uh, because from the fabric we can easily config this connection to the packet connection where the user input of the SM2000 really connected to and I just double click on the window double click on the window oh no I would like to but I cannot so I just minimize it so I can see the rest of the options over here and after you config things like this you can click OK and then the next thing we need to design is the call post width modulation call PWM um, some display error so I just double click in order to show all of the call and those calls are the VHDL 
coal wood already imported inside the liberal we can just break and use them without redesign redesign those core again so we will use this core and we will put it in this one and when we put it in the core in this box um, in the in the rest you will see that this core will appear in the fabric and we would like them this core will need to have two parts one is the master part and one is the slave part the master will control this core PWM and they want to have the master to be to be in the Microsoft system side and also we need to check the configuration of the core PWM to make it as what is shown in this um, instruction if you go down we already been through all of those steps and we need to configure our core PWM and this is the result of the call PWM we need to we need to have. So everything of the channel should be saved at default. We only change the number of the PWM channel and uh, bus width. We need to have a or maybe it's here. Yeah, we need to have eight channels because we want to control all of the eight lands on the board. So we choose 8 and the bus width or the bus resolution is 16 bits and then the rest is default we click OK and after we do all of the configura configuration in this part for the peripherals we can click next and then now we have to configure the clock and if we configure the clock when you click on the clock you can see that they shows oh this is the clock and what are the parts inside the Microsoft system is connected to this clock? Of course, in order to know what is the appropriate frequency, we need to drive those components. We should follow the documents or we can just simply follow the instruction in order to have a running program as they recommend. And first, we need to choose the, the clock. We need to choose how we can generate this clock and we will use the on chip on chip means uh, if you look at the chip if you look at the chip it means there will be a physical component already inside the chip as a clock and if we configure to use this clock then we can enable this clock to run and generate this kind of frequency and for the frequency for this clock we will need to generate the 100 megahertz the same for the rest but for the for this clock you can uncheck the clock in order to delete this part and then check the clock to see the relevant connection to that clock. What are the parts are driven are driven by that clock? And as they recommend in the instruction we need to divide it by two in order to have only fifteen megahertz. And after doing this configuring for the clock driving the relevant components in the chip we can click next and in the microcontroller we need to choose for the real-time counter for the real-time counter where is the clock source where will be the clock we'll drive the real-time counter inside the microcontroller the MSS part and as the instruction tell us to do we should choose sorry we should choose the on chip 1 megahertz and we choose the on chip 1 megahertz and then we click next there are all the options to configure the cortex, configure the cache controller, configure the bus matrix if you, would like, if you would like to see them around you can pull around however the uh, lab instruction only instruct us to configure this part for the real time counter part component in the Microsoft system and we click next and uh, for our chip actually we cannot do anything over here because our chip if you read any document related to this chip they will say for the MS M2S 010 we, we don't have this option so that's why it's rain we cannot choose anything and the same for the security because the chip doesn't support this configuring configuration so we cannot do anything else 
and for the we click next to go to the interrupt configuration of the chip we wait and this is the the interrupt signal will go to our processor from which instance from the core PWM instance and uh, it does it in the instruction they say leave as default and we go to the memory map inside this memory map we can see that this is the core PWM and those are the bus addresses that this call is connected to in order to interact with our Microsoft system and this one is important but not in this uh, lab yet but not at this moment in this lab and we click finish and then we wait for it to be generated and we wait and we wait if it takes too much time you can just um, skip this part and go to the part where the generating is done and now when the generating is done you can see our design is open in this window uh, we need to see that there are no errors for the generating the design and because of the uh, display error between this software and my computer so one way to fix it you would choose this tab and choose this one and then double click in order to only focus on this window zoom to fit and now we we'll just follow the instruction in the lab in order to um, set to config those pin and I will follow to config this one tie high tie high means we connect this pin of the chip to the voltage supply and for the interrupt signal we will tie low means we will connect this pin to the ground and for this pin we will promote it to the top level just my guess may be promoting to the top level related to some um, VHDL design maybe for the simulation or for the testing purpose but I have no idea just my guess and for those pin as the instruction says we don't need them so we can mark unused we mark unused for those pin this one also unused unused and for the TPO8 we will promote to the top level you can we when we promote to the top level we can easily that this pin is used the uh, GPO8 fabric to Microsoft system is used as input because we want to receive the signal from the user button through the fabric and then it will go to the Microsoft system and go to our chip to be processed and for the PWM we want to send the signal from the Microsoft system out to the LEDs in order to control them so you can see this is arrow pointing out mean points out of the chip towards the LEDs and this is point in mean from the user button points into our chip so that the chip can receive the signal and after you already config everything you can do the root the option for design rules check and uh, after that we can just dock it again to be here and for the message we need to see this warning here but at least we know that the design rules check succeeded we have some floating output pins maybe let me see the design again yes for the init done we are we don't use it so we mark unused if we mark unused and then we do the design rules check again then we dock it so we can see the message and if we see the message we can see there's no errors anymore there are no warnings either so it's good and our design rules check succeeded so that's good and after we succeeded in doing the design rule check we can start to generate our design and as they say to generate the design we either go to smart design tab generate the component or we just simply click on this symbol and I will just simply click on that symbol 
and when you generate if you encounter some uh, errors or some antivirus errors they say something cannot be run you should turn it off that's why I already turned off before I generate the design and now the component is generated successfully you can see over here and after we generate the thing they say that we should close our um, we should close this one but it's not necessary to follow this instruction so we will just move on and after we already design and config our chip we now start to import the necessary the relevant constraints and the relevant constraints will be the IO constraint and the timing constraint and then we just double click on the manage constraints and I can undock this window so now we will import our IO file we import it and we check place and root and we move here to save yes we will have to save it and for the timing we will choose derive constraints so the liberal will start to derive the timing constraints based on the design and the chip information we click yes as the instruction instruct us to do and now we go to we should go to this window and check yes it's done and we see okay it's saved we can dock it again into our main liberal window and everything was successfully generated good and now we go to the instruction to see what they instruct us to do after we import the constraints file into our design we now generate the bitstream we will generate the bitstream based on our chip design and configuration and again to make those uh, generation process run smoothly without the interruption from the antivirus because maybe the antivirus might cause some errors during the running so you can turn it off when you run it uh, okay for the generate bitstream it will be over here and I click run now it runs and we just need to wait until the generating bitstream and successfully I will pause the video when the generating bitstream has finished I will start the video again